Allegra and Bart, it was wonderful to watch you coach. Thank you. This ballet, you're welcome. And we're going to start this discussion with Allegra. Please tell us when you first saw the ballet, um, what you said to Balanchine, what he said to you. We want to hear it I, all. I first saw the ballet 64 years ago, which in the other century. <laughs> and uh, Balanchine had choreographed all of it at that point. And I could have walked into the room while he was creating it, but I had so many other rehearsals. So the first time I saw it was, it was everyone ha had been invited mm -hmm. to see it. And uh, Stravinsky and Balanchine were there, of course, near the piano. And I was sitting on that long bench at the School of American yeah, Ballet, these are which the famous photographs by Martha Swope, or yeah, the famous to, yeah. photograph. So I was sitting on the bench next to Barbara Walzak, and after the first pas de trois, I, I was like flabbergasted. Oh my gosh, this is! She said, "Oh, wait to see more." So then I saw the second pas de trois, and then the pas de deux. And it was astonishing. The, these words are so meaningless, astonishing. I, it's like, this is, this is just amazing. I don't know if I said it to myself at that time, but I feel that it's the ballet that changed the course of ballet. Mm -hmm. in time. I agree completely. Yes. And um, so... And you spoke to him about well, it. Well, after it was over, I ran up to him and said something like, or some, de some descriptive adjective. And he said, oh, you can understudy it. But he didn't say what. And I said, well, I'll understudy Diana Adams. Didn't he also say you'd understudy Melissa Hayden? Well, he said, you can understudy any part. Okay. And I said, Diana, of course, okay. because that was the pas de deux. That was the most mm -hmm. unique part of it. The mm -hmm. whole thing is unique, but well, why not? Why not? So Diana how did you Adams? learn it after that? Well, I didn't learn it for mm -hmm. a while because I had so many things to dance. Those were the days when the company was small and everybody was suddenly rehearsing, rehearsing, being thrown into things. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, this is wonderful. I can understudy it. But I watched it on, in performances, but I didn't actually learn it, but almost. Mm -hmm. And then the company went to Australia and various other places. Okay, that would have been spring back, of 58, okay. And suddenly Diana Adams was out. She's mm -hmm. very fragile. Mm -hmm. And so I had to do it. So basically Arthur taught me, but Valentin also. So I call myself the original understudy, <laughs> right. which I like that because it's like, has a certain, you know, whatever, a sound. And um, so that was. And did Balanchine talk to you about how to do anything differently, or was it all up to you how to take a tall woman's role and convert well, it? Well, I was own? taking a tall woman's role, but actually, Arthur and Diana Adams were the same height. Mm -hmm. But I thought, oh, I have to do this differently. So I am naturally supple, and I thought I'll do it uh, in my way, a little with more undulations. Mm -hmm. And then if Valentin doesn't like it, he can tell me. That's exactly what would happen usually yeah. if he would speak if it wasn't yes. appropriate. But then he liked it, so he <coughs> said very little. Arthur was extremely helpful because mm -hmm. it's a pas de deux. Mm -hmm. You have to dance with your partner, mm -hmm. naturally. 
So that was my thrilling experience. I yes. But you know, I, I, go ahead. I did a little homework for this because it's been so long since I was asked to be part of Agon. And mm -hmm. um, there are beautiful tapes of both Diana and Arthur mm -hmm. dancing and then a beautiful tape of Arthur with Allegra. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed, since I'm the, the male in this, is how Arthur adapted mm -hmm. the original mm -hmm. choreography to the new partner and how it, Allegra's presence changed the pas de deux flavor. Not the steps, the steps mm -hmm. are the same, mm -hmm. but they're approached and infused with, with a much different take. And Arthur, being the wonderful dancer that he is, was, uh, was filling in the same blanks mm -hmm. um, I instinctually. And this is what I like to see whenever a couple is dancing, is that they speak and talk between mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure Arthur was very instructive with you being oh, the new yes, person yes. on the block. Had but he was be. also responding to your input. Mm -hmm. And this is the way it should well, always be. Well, it's a pas de deux. Indeed. So you do. And Arthur was a terrific, terrific partner and dancer, but also Valentin didn't say, oh, don't do this or that. I did not change any of the choreography. Absolutely I not. just, I put it on my body, which who else, who else's body could I put it on? Well, the instrument that is portraying the piece is going to sound different. A Stradivarius sounds different than, mm -hmm. than another make, mm -hmm. both equally beautiful. Um, the pianist can play the piece of music which is structured, but it's going to sound like the piano that is being played and the pianist. But also the tempo played. will be different, but that's another subject. That's another subject, but it's along the same line, and it mm -hmm. has to do with the coloration of the art mm -hmm. by the artist. We as dancers are playing our own instrument, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're different, tall mm -hmm. woman, small woman. Mm -hmm. More extension. I think you had more extension than I was. I had more extension and more limberness. So, yeah. but I brought that to it, but not like, oh, no, no, no. Within within the choreography, always with respect for the choreography. Both of you today spoke a lot about simplicity, and is it possible? Allegra for dancers after you who are super supple, dancers who go past 180 in a penche without any trouble. Is that something that should be incorporated into Agon all the time? How do you feel about, about I, I height? I feel that um, it's sort of whatever the movement requires, but if every step, every arabesque is, a, is like a six o'clock, a mm -hmm. hundred and eighty. Mm -hmm. Then it's like it get, it it takes away the dimension of mm -hmm. it because you've seen that before. You want to see low, high, up, or whatever. The choreography. Yeah. You did lower her arabesque several times to say it should. It's about the way well, the leg swings it, out. A different. Yeah, yeah. I wanted it very often to be parallel mm -hmm. with the floor. Mm -hmm. And so the line of the arms and the leg and the floor. Were and what about the connection between the two dancers in this pas de deux? I noticed, for example, when they walked in holding hands, you said, that's not the way you enter. You don't hold hands. There are other times where you said, you have to be aware of him, or you said to him, you, you have to be aware of her, even when you're backing up and not looking at her. So, and there were times when you sh you, she should look at him and times where she shouldn't look at him. Is this something that is actually in the choreography? Is it something that dancers develop for their own interpretations it, that, instinctively? It is in the choreography. I, I do think that it is. And um, I think that, again, people get over, they get uh, Flamboyant. swept away. Uh, with with their Emotious. selves and their emotion, instead of st it, we don't want it detached, but it's cool and it's tuned in mm -hmm. to the point that is being made at the moment. If you overdo that, 
you distract from what the is the choreography. The choreography and the intent of those steps. Mm -hmm. and you lose the choreography. Yeah. You lose the choreography. You speak about certain things evolve. The choreography is the same, but it does evolve to some degree. It has changed. And there's one specific point that I'd mm -hmm. like to bring up because I've noticed how much it has changed lately. And it, and it is when, uh, after his second little solo, he does that coupe jeté and takes her hand and yeah. brings her back in. In the, in the old films <coughs> with Allegra and with Diana Adams, the woman is looking toward him and is watching him. Mm -hmm. He approaches her, she knows he's approaching mm -hmm. her, he takes her hand and she's ready and they go. Right. Now you see it, it was a little less dramatized today, but she's facing the other direction mm -hmm. right. so that she registers a touch of surprise when he touches her hand, which I've seen shown actually much more dramatically sometimes in the theater as being quite startled when he touches her hand, and then they're off. Which I think is an addition that is extraneous. Um, it's a, a personal comment. Now, a little bit of that is fine, and uh, indeed, Mr. Balanchine wanted you to bring yourself to the work. But as soon as you overdid it, he would be the first one to say, no, that's too much, mm -hmm. or uh, not, no, dear. Does it matter which way the woman faces at that point? What do you think? I, it, it's I, like I think it's like the two adagios. They have to remain aware. She's over there waiting for him. She knows he's dancing. It's, it's an involvement. Yeah, it's a... But to, to have the man take her hand and have her go, oh, oh my God, he's <laughs> well, there. Well, not quite that, but yeah. But that's but, what yeah. it is, isn't right. it? Right, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Not needed. Right. Mm -hmm. So other than that, it doesn't yeah. matter yeah, it which is, way she's facing. It is a surprise because we don't know what's going to happen next, choreography. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's like what Bart just showed. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's too much. You both made clear how much drama there is just in the steps without anybody adding a thing, just simply carrying out the steps. There's surprise. Allegra, you made much out of the need for her to come up in one count, basically, after the, the yeah. split behind him. To the audience, it's a sh that's a shock to the audience when she suddenly is up. And um, there's a sense of danger in some of the choreography, oh, too. Yes. And you just also spoke about, I think maybe before the cameras rolled, about dancing La Sonambula together. And I know Allegra's talked about <laughs> danger in that. And yeah. could you talk a little about that and the danger? that How hard is, how hard is the supported arabesque when he goes onto his ground and then does the little borets? Is it really hard, or is it meant to make no, the audience it's terrified? It's a trick, and it's meant to be uh, uh, startling to them. Mm -hmm. There are several moments. One is when she comes up on the back. We don't want to see how it happens. Mm -hmm. The dancer has to know technically what to do after what, but you can't do it in pieces, so it goes the, 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 the. It has to go blah. Mm. And, but um, it's not blah, it's more gentle than well, that. One, in one. But it's, oh, here's the danger, what's going to happen, and then it's resolved. You may not have fear, but the audience is holding its breath I don't during think that arabesque. I don't think a supported arabesque where the man suddenly is flat on his back and mm -hmm. she doesn't move. Mm -hmm. And then he when begins to move to further like threaten her balance. Yeah. yeah. Which, which creates a, an expansion of her motion. Mm -hmm. And a long, long line. Mm -hmm. Long line. Yeah. From a long line to a longer line. Actually, emphatically supporting the fact that she's still supported. Mm -hmm. Drawing out the danger. Mm -hmm. But also, it's that feeling, what's going to happen next? Mm -hmm. And uh, Claudia, you spoke about this before we turned the cameras on, that, that the pas de deux was choreographed first. First. So yeah. what's amazing is the rest of the ballet. Pas de deux is fantastic, and it's probably the, the kernel. Mm -hmm. And this is Absolutely. affirmation that it's the creative germ that the rest of it came out of. Mm -hmm. He knew it had to be the first thing, and he spent two weeks working on it before he called anybody else in to begin working, so it, and, and Mitchell said that he threw out all kinds of stuff and he'd never seen him work that hard throwing things out. Well, this music demanded something. Demanded something, and that's New the other thing I know you're gonna ask us about, but this is the actual Stravinsky score mm -hmm. that was written specifically mm -hmm. as a collaboration with Mas Mr. Balanchine mm -hmm. for ballet. Mm -hmm. 
and I think they had it timed out to the second. They absolutely you told did. Me. They absolutely the quarter, did. A quarter second even. Oh, mm. That's too long. For <laughs> you know? But that was the precision that right. existed between these two artists. And how hard that score is to play. I know that Robert Irving had said he hated when foreign orchestras had to play Egon, which brings me to the, to the story of Russia. Could you fill us in on oh, what Russia. happened <laughs> with the music and the dancing in Russia in well, 1962? Russia. Yes. Russia. Yeah. Russia. 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 All right, Russia. I was 25, it was 1962. And I thought, oh, I don't need to go to Russia. Uh, I have a a little girl, a year and a half at home, and so I was very, should I go? And I decided I would go. Oh, I, had, I also thought I wasn't necessary, but then... Because Diana Adams was going? Yeah, and, she yeah. was injured almost immediately, so yes, suddenly I, I knew it, knew Aegon, but I didn't think I was necessary on that tour. And opening night, uh, in Moscow? In Moscow, yes. They played the national anthems, mm. and I always cry national because they promise so much, and it doesn't oh. really, <laughs> yeah, I get very political. And um, here was Russia and the U U.S. This is 20 days before the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. gosh. And then, then the first program, uh, Serenade. Oh, I decided I shouldn't cry, but I should do Sinead's From Sea to Shining Sea, <laughs> which is in the. <laughs> so that calmed me down. Serenade, we did Serenade, I was in it, and the reception was good. They liked that, and then there were the two middle ballets interplay and Western Symphony, and then it was Aegon. But a little backstory. A Rus the Russian orchestra had never played anything like this. It was atonal. Also, there was no story. Uh, like mm -hmm. the ballets, it was not Sleeping Beauty, Swan Lake, uh, the Stone Flower, some of the political ballets that... So this was non-narrative. No one knew what the response would be. And Khrushchev was sitting there. <laughs> opening night. Right. And it was for all the bigwigs opening yeah. night. Right? But Robert Irving, our first conductor, sent Hugo Fiorato ahead mm -hmm. to uh, rehearse with the orchestra. And then we arrived, so the orchestra had, had had some rehearsals. So we did this ballet at the end of the first program, and no one knew what the response was going to be. It had an overwhelmingly great response. And um, when we came out the stage door, Whoever was in the orchestra and the um, in the audience started screaming Nietzsche, <laughs> and then maybe they said can't to maybe, but they had uh, never seen this kind of a ballet. Yeah, yeah, but they were very open to it. I mean, in Russia at that point, the composers had to adhere to a party line. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Shostakovich couldn't even have some of his stuff played because it was anti. Mm -hmm. The technique that Balanchine was brought up in went logically to this abstract vein. And um, when he left, there were two branches and they each went their directions, but the people didn't have a choice in choosing. You mm -hmm. know, it was kind of dictated. Right. And here came the missing branch. But the music is. Is it hard to dance to? I mean, you don't have 12 tone music in the, in the pas de deux, basically. Is, and you, but you also don't count it, is that I right? The pas de deux is the one place in the ballet that you don't count. Mm -hmm. The rest of it you must count. Mm -hmm. 
because it's synchronous with the, the rhythms and the other people going at the same time. And if you don't count and you get off, it ruins the whole structure. So all the rest of the ballet is a counting nightmare. Mm -hmm. And the pot is an oasis of, uh -huh. of tone poem. And then mm -hmm. at one point, Melissa Hayden and Diana Adams were sort of yes, in the front. And they were both like, Wrong. <laughs> 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 You're on the wrong Accusing cup. each other of doing the wrong step in the wrong Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's sort of yeah. like, yeah. I love I'm it. right, I you're know. wrong. But I mean, not that they were speaking, but it was like glaring at each other. My story on right. tour uh -huh. of, of Agon, uh, I think we were in Germany, and um, we didn't take our orchestra with us on this trip. Uh, I think it was still Robert and uh, Hugo, would go ahead, one mm -hmm. or the other, to rehearse the orchestra. Well, Algon was so foreign to them, even 10 years later here, that in the first movement, one by one instrument would make a mistake and drop out. <laughs> and there was the whole cast counting, and we finished the, in silence, complete silence. The whole orchestra had dropped the out. The whole orchestra had dropped out. It's that difficult. Oh, I know. I, I once ran into Robert Irving after a performance in Paris of Symphony in Three Movements in the 80s. And he said, well, thank God we're not doing Agon. <laughs> and that was in the 80s, so and, and in Paris, not Russia. So yeah. it is hard for people to play still. And the music is groundbreaking as well as the choreography, so. Can I ask you about the very last um, Hark, I hear movement. some sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we got some it's the orchestra sound. outside. <laughs> the last post has changed a lot. I also watched the films the past few days. It's the, 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 Diana Adams is standing totally erect with one arm down at the nape of Arthur Mitchell's neck. He's yeah. basically in the same pose all yeah. the time. Mm -hmm. Allegra is, her head is down but not mm -hmm. her body. Allegra is curved slightly over him and there's a tenderness to it, almost a protectiveness to it. And the one arm is down. And now you can see the women are completely collapsed. collapsed. So is this what you call evolution? Is this something Balanchine approved? Is this just the way things get exaggerated? Because it, it, now they just, they look not just, they look exhausted. I mean, it looks like a little joke mm -hmm. about exhaustion. That's and the audience often laughs a little, oh, they're tired. They that must have been some night. They know? shouldn't be doing that, in my opinion. And um, as things evolve and uh, isms, mannerisms get added into the choreography, and they're, oh, they, I like when they do that, and I like when they do this, it becomes another animal. And uh, I don't like hearing that the audience laughs at the end of that sometimes now. It's not meant to be that at all. It's meant to be a resolution of sorts, but not, I'm exhausted, that was hard. Mm -hmm. But there were changes. I mean, he did make changes. We know that the, the boys, not in the pot of dough, but the boys at the end turning around to face the back. That I think is the late 70s and people I was thought there that when was he did a let. Oh yeah, can you, can you say something about that? Well, we used to finish in this position. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think to, to make the complete loop he wanted the men in the beginning position, facing mm -hmm. upstage. He just came back and said, no. So that's what it was from then on. So he was still, it was still a work in progress to him, even in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it a work in progress, but... A work in refinement. Mm -hmm. A new idea. A new idea. But it was his idea. It was his idea. It didn't come from one dancer or a ballet master or... Yeah. He changed the introduction in Agon when I went into it too for the first pas de trois. You know, okay. the music that uh, leads into the pas de trois, pas de trois, pas de deux is exactly the same music counted in three different ways. Mm -hmm. Well, for, for us, he decided to be more literal with the triplets. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, 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 four, five, six. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't there. When Tony did it, it was Tony Blum and two girls. They, they simply ad-libbed and did sort of a jazz step mm -hmm. three times, and then they stood up and walked around during all of that raucous music. Right. So he decided, I'll choreograph this for this group of people. That was an addition, and then I think it's that way from then on. Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything else you would like to say or could say about this man and this woman, this particular man and woman? And the man is like no other man that's come before in balancing pas de deux, not only because he's on his back. What about the who's in control, if anybody? What's the state of their equality? How do you see it? I, you I think it's kind of like the music. It's, it's an atmosphere. It's, there's no melody. There's a... It's stronger than an atmosphere. Well, it's a very strong atmosphere, but it's not a relationship. That, I mean, I'm not John and you're not Mary. We're uh, things. We're energies that are... We're not things. Well, we are. We're human beings. Human beings, but <laughs> reacting in this sound space. I mean, okay. I, I, you're asking for what is the relationship? Because there's nothing it's else quite like this, Pada de and you're all speaking of how aware they are of each other. Is there? It? Maybe you say there's not, but is what is to you who have who have had well, it in your bloodstream? It's like sentences. Is maybe one starts and the other finishes, mm -hmm. or the other way around. And it's then, definitely a dialogue. Yes, mm -hmm. and you just. I like, I like, when they're not talking to each other, I don't mean talking, I mean sharing the energy, uh, uh, distributing the weight. If, if she does it by himself and he, do, he does it by himself and she's not listening or moving when he disturbs her, they're not talking. There, there's no relation, uh, moment, there's no physics. There's, uh, but the music is talking to both of them. Well, the music is, is telling you how they're relating, and it's this tone poem. One very specific thing you made clear that I didn't really ever know quite before, no matter how many times I've seen it. You pointed out how one sequence draws forth, how one movement draws forth the next. Yes. How it is her arabesque that gets him to go to the ground, and his then little borets along the ground that create the the swerving along. And that was just suddenly very clear how one thing prompts another. And you seem to be pointing that out throughout the pas de deux, in fact. This is actually Balanchine's greatest contribution to ballet. The preparation for the step that you're going to do is found in the end of the step mm -hmm. you have just executed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a glissade preparation before a grand jeté. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we take that a uh, classical ballet technique thing and move it into this arena of that movement causes this movement that's kinetic. Yeah. And this is the ballet that changed choreography. Yeah. I think we have to close. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but thank wait, you. Wait, wait. Thank you. Ballerina yes. and juggler Allegra Kent, <laughs> yeah. and great dancer Bart Cook. Oh, thank you. Thank and you both so much have to study. for being so articulate oh, and so full of you. jokes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Beautiful. My delight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.